Britain has this food called Marmite. It's a sticky brown yeast byproduct from brewing that has a unique taste all of its own. It's said you either love it or you hate it. The same can be said for the Pontiac Aztec. It's a sticky brown, no, you either love it or you hate it. And increasingly today, people are revising their views on a car that was vilified when it was launched. Why did GM greenlight this car when focus groups said they hated it? And why did it come with a tent? This is the Pontiac Aztec story. It's the mid-90s and General Motors is fishing around for new vehicle ideas. West Coast design lead Tom Peters and his team were throwing ideas at the wall to see what stuck. What if we crossed a Camaro with a Blazer? The Camaro had sporty appeal and looks, and the Blazer had flexibility and cargo carrying. Why not give customers something that had both? The term crossover hadn't yet been coined, but this is essentially what Peters was suggesting. The concept was nicknamed Bear Claw. The team took inspiration from the then relatively obscure North Face jackets, with their two-tone colour design and ways they could be reconfigured. Without knowing it, GM in the USA were thinking along the same lines as Fiat in Italy with their multipler, innovation and practicality. The car would initially use the same S-series frame used by the Blazer giving it 4x4 off-roading ability, flared wheel arches and a low roof, allowing for a lower centre of gravity to provide a little more sportiness. The team were based in California and were thinking of the beach-going, Yosemite hiking, Lake Tahoe water skiing, outdoorsy types that they could see around them. But GM management didn't want to use the SUV chassis. It's heavier, which requires a bigger engine and burns more fuel, and it would cost too much to build. They preferred shortening the car-derived U-platform used on the Chevy Venture. A change of chassis meant major design changes that produced compromises in the original vision. GM picked their 3.4 litre V6 185 horsepower engine, giving the car a non too impressive combined fuel economy figure of 18 miles per gallon. Although this wannabe off-roader would be front-wheel drive, GM's VersaTrack all-wheel drive system would be added as an option later on. With GM desperate to prove it didn't only make stodgy cars, they decreed 40% of all new vehicles would be innovative, whatever that meant. With that, GM management pushed the Aztec design to be extreme, extreme, extreme and, and more, more extreme. extreme. With a work environment that discouraged dissent, there were no bad ideas, and all ideas were flung at the wall to see what would stick. Want to sit on your tailgate and drink beer with a cop holder? No problem. Want a centre console that's also a cooler you can take with you? Sure. Want to control your music while you're sitting on your tailgate? Why not? Tired of those old-fashioned 20th century tents that sit on the ground? Have one that fits on your trunk and sleep on your Aztec-branded air mattress. Let's give the car a heads-up display. Why not put bags in the side pockets that you can use as backpacks to carry stuff around? Let's allow the rear seats to be removed to make it more versatile like a minivan. How about a tray in the trunk to stop groceries from sliding around that can be removed? And build windshield washers into the wipers themselves to distribute fluid more evenly. That's not to say these ideas were bad, and GM did survey their Gen X customers to see what they'd want in the Aztec. But GM was a company that had always played it safe, and was now throwing any and every idea at its new car, without any real review of what would work and what wouldn't. General Motors committees not known for innovative thought were deciding which innovative features should go on the car. The outside was also designed to be made extreme, extreme. and aggressive. In fact, one designer said it had been made aggressive for the sake of being aggressive. But chief designer Tom Peters said, we wanted to do a bold, in-your-face vehicle that wasn't for everybody. GM had followed convention for many years, and now it was time to lead the market. In fact, the team was proud of what they'd made, and felt it was something truly innovative at GM that would revolutionise transport. As with all cars, General Motors put the bear claw up against a focus group of prospective customers to see what they thought. To the company's surprise, the public weren't won over. In fact, the car scored dead last of all the cars presented. One famous comment from the survey said, Can they possibly be serious with this thing? I wouldn't take it as a gift. 
but GM were in denial. They convinced themselves that the focus groups were wrong. GM was just too far ahead of the curve, and the public couldn't see it. In 1999, the Aztec broke cover for the first time. The outside was extreme, extreme. matched by the extreme, extreme inside. inside. The Aztec was pitched to young Gen Xers as an aggressively styled sport recreational vehicle and showed its North Face jacket inspiration. GM execs boasted this would make a statement about breaking from GM's instinct for caution. What's surprising now, given all the Aztec backlash, is the car was generally well received. So much so, GM greenlit it for production the following year. The production Aztec was launched at the 2000 Detroit Auto Show. While the outside was even more radical than the 1999 concept, the inside had been toned down quite a bit. Keen to make a big splash, at the press conference they hired a fake crowd, with signs like, It's the versatility, baby! and Aztec 185 horsepower, pretending to be excited. At the end, GM's marketing honcho Don Butler jumped into the pit and crowd surfed. That same year, the Aztec was heavily promoted on TV Survivor, with the tagline, quite possibly the most versatile vehicle on the planet. GM showed off the car to motor critics in what they thought should be its natural habitat, Lake Tahoe in California. The most positive thing the press could say about its appearance was that it divided opinion, with some loving it and some hating it but with more people hating it than loving it, and many of them in the Aztec's target market, it was going to be an uphill battle. For many reviewers, the proportions of the car were all wrong, with no cohesive design both inside and out. With the double-stacked front treatment and flat rear, it looked like the car had been sawn in half and a foot of filler inserted. The reviewers praised GM's gamble to break out of its stodgy image, but wondered if the public was ready for something so radical. They also found the 3.4 litre V6 to be underpowered. With a shortened minivan body, minivan engine, and minivan front suspension, surprise surprise, it drove like a minivan, and had its fair share of body roll. Although the large rear window was praised, they decried the line across the middle, creating a large blind spot. The outdoorsy-inspired roof rack developed whistling wind noises. If GM had slipped this car out, the pushback might not have been so bad. But GM needed this car to succeed, so they did a big marketing blitz. It was the start of its new wilder direction, and the louder you shout about something, the more people are going to notice. Bob Lutz joined GM as Vice Chairman of Product Development in 2001, after stints at Ford and Chrysler. When he saw the concept in 1999, he was shocked to see what GM was about to launch. Once he saw GM's organisation, he understood why. The team thought they'd made a winning car, because it hit all of the internal goals. It was innovative, check. It was delivered on time, check. But the car is more than just attributes. It's an emotional connection, and people weren't connecting with the Aztec. A small redesign came just six months after launch, along with the Versatrack all-wheel drive system, but sales were already failing. GM needed to sell 30,000 cars a year to break even, and expected to sell 75,000. But sales barely broke 27,000 at their peak. Many were sold off cheaply to rental car companies to be thrust upon poor unsuspecting tourists. Some felt the car was pricey, selling between $25,000 and $30,000. At that time, you could buy a high-end minivan or a three-row SUV with that kind of money. And its black-clad body panels, whistling roof rack, and weak Versatrack four-wheel drive system wasn't kidding anyone that it was an off-roader. So why not buy a real SUV? or get more practicality with a cheaper minivan. But the people who bought Aztecs loved them. They rarely went wrong, and they weren't blighted by the recall problems that other cars faced. It won Most Appealing Entry Sport Utility Vehicle in 2001 from JD Power, noting the Aztec scores highest or second highest in every measurement, except exterior styling. GM used the same platform for the Buick Rendezvous, and being a more upmarket car, they chose more conservative styling. They gave the larger car three-row seating that the Aztec lacked. Launched around the same time, this car was a hit, peaking at 72,000 cars sold in 2003. 
The success was badly needed as Buick was becoming a dowdy old brand. GM priced the Rendezvous much lower than its competitors, the Acura MDX and Lexus RX, and thanks to Tiger Woods adverts, younger buyers discovered it and bought one. To solve the lacklustre engine on the Buick, in 2004 it offered a 3.6 litre V6 with 242 horsepower, and in 2006 a revised 3.5 litre V6 with 195 horsepower replaced the original 185 horsepower engine. The Aztec was quietly killed off in 2005, to be replaced by the Pontiac Torrent, that was itself killed off in 2009, to be replaced by the GMC Terrain. Tom Peters, the Aztec's designer, went on to focus on the Corvette, leading the design on the C6, the award-winning C7, and the 2020 C8. He also designed the fifth generation Camaro. About the Aztec's development, he said, During the development of the vehicle, there are many forces that can drive redirection from the original vision. So what's imperative is developing a strong vision and then keep it visible throughout development for everyone to focus on. Staying true to your vision is key. If I could do the Aztec over again, I would have stuck with the framed four-wheel drive platform and the capability and proportions that went with it. Lifestyle vehicles like the Aztec have been tried since and succeeded, for example the Honda Element. GM wanted the Aztec to change people's minds and to show it was an innovative company, and certainly there it succeeded. Actually no it didn't, GM got burnt by the Aztec and receded to safe conservative cars before going bankrupt in 2009, having to be bailed out by the US government. When Amazon killed the Fire Phone, Jeff Bezos was asked if he would stop taking risks, to which he replied, absolutely not. It's improbable that all the risky bets will pay off, but you need to keep innovating or you will die. Post-bankruptcy GM pushed for innovation with the Chevy Volt, trying to show the government it had really, truly changed this time. But after the car launched to lackluster sales, GM went back to playing it safe. The Aztec got a bump in popularity after being featured in the TV show Breaking Bad. Although it looked awkward and ungainly in 2001 when it launched, today it doesn't seem quite so awkward when compared to the Kia Sportages and Hyundai Tucsons of the world. And with this being such a popular market segment today, should we reevaluate the Aztec? Was it just 15 years ahead of its time? Hmm, not quite. The Lexus RX was essentially the same vehicle and debuted two years earlier. It sold well enough that it's still on sale today. If you build a car that many customers find ugly, sales are going to be tough. To get early advert free access to new videos or to appear in the credits, please consider supporting me using the Patreon link below from just $1 or 80p a month. And hit that subscribe button to get notified of new videos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.